Hey, there's John Cummins from Executive Medicine. Uh, it's been a little while, but today I wanted to focus on a piece on prostate-specific antigen or PSA. So many people wonder, well, you know, where does the term come from? What does it mean? So three three terms. It comes from the prostate, so only the prostate gland can secrete a PSA. So women, by definition, can't have a PSA. It's specific to the prostate, so no other organ in the body secretes this um, particular protein. And antigen is kind of code for protein. So it's a protein that's secreted by the normal prostate. So what influences it? Well, first of all, prostate size. So when we're a little male infant, our prostate might be as big as the tip of my little finger. As we grow into adults, it becomes as big as my nose or the tip of my nose. Um, and then over time, at a variable rate, it can get bigger and bigger and generally tends to grow with time. And the, the rate of growth is variable. So some men get a lot, much larger prostate than, than other men the same age. And for reasons that aren't clear, we, we really don't know what causes, so it stimulates prostate growth. Um, and certainly we don't know what causes prostate cancers. So what's um, a normal range? It, it, it depends on, I think the, the better question is what's your normal range? And the only way you're gonna know your normal range is if you have a bunch of PSA testing done over time, typically once a year, so you establish your baseline. We do have a reference range that we consider normal for men. That can vary from you know, 0.4 up to say 2.5, or if, if you're an older man, say 80, the normal range could be defined as 7.5. And the reason is that every decade, the normal ranges go up because we know that the prostate gland typically increases as we get older. So. Why? Um, so what happens with PSA so it can give us cause for concern? Well, first of all, um, there, are, there are typically three things that can happen. The prostate just gets bigger, you can get an infected prostate, and you can get a cancerous prostate. So if the gland gets just bigger over time, it can grow outward, in which case it doesn't really matter. It can also grow inward and pinch the tube in the middle, middle a little bit like squeezing a straw. That can cause flow problems with prostate. And so typically it's dribbling, it's, it's, it's difficulty starting, difficulty stopping, very poor stream. You're there for much longer than the, the other guy in the, in, in the toilet block. Um, and that's amenable, you know, sometimes to medications to block testosterone, which drives prostate growth. Um, other sorts of medications can help, and then surgery can help as well. Um, so, so one thing is the prostate gland can increase in size, and and, and some men just run with a higher PSA. Um, and we know it's not cancerous based on a number of investigations, etc. I should say also that even though we have a reference range for PSA, we, because it's not a bell-shaped curve for various reasons and you have outliers that can drag an average up, we actually now look at the median uh, PSA. And so what, what's the median? If you took 100 John Cummins's and you lined up 100 of them with the highest prostate and the lowest prostate, and you took the 50th John Cummins, that's the median. And so we're much more interested in, in where are you with reference to the median for your age. And the thing is that we also know, and certainly for men in their 40s, if your prostate is low, like say it's a 0.4, um, then your, your risk of cancer next five years is very low as well. So like most things in medicine, if you think of it, waist circumference, blood pressure, blood sugar, cholesterol, you want things low. Low is, is typically better. Now, if you see a PSA that you know normally is about one and it shoots up to 30, that is so high so quickly that um, I've never seen that as a cancer, but I have seen that as infection. Typically the man, um, it, it hurts to pee, uh, he's got frequency, uh, it's uncomfortable, he knows something's going on, he, he may be um, feverish, and then if you check the prostate with a digital exam and touch it, it's exquisitively tender. And these ones, you know, need antibiotics, and it can take 18 months to two years for the PSA to settle back down again to its normal baseline level. And the third one is a, is, is a prostate cancer, and what I've found after 18 years of looking after um, uh, people, including men's prostate, is that um, the rule of thumb, if the PSA goes up by more than 0.75 per year, per annum, for the vast majority of men that actually works. And so if it doesn't go up by that much, the, the odds of a cancer there are incredibly unlikely. It's possible, I've never seen it, but my urologist colleagues tell me it's possible. Um, but typically what happens is if the PSA goes up by more than 0.75 per annum, I would normally check the prostate to feel whether it feels cancerous or not and then get another test done maybe a month or two later and ask the man not to ejaculate in any way, shape or form for about five days before the test. 
because you've got to remember the prostate gland is actually a, a reproductive organ and any form of ejaculation can spuriously give you a rise in PSA. And if the PSA stays higher um, or increases over a month or two, then we typically refer to a urologist, get an MRI and, and just see if there's something there that's, that's worth biopsying. So I hope it makes it clear that the prostate specific antigen is specific to the prostate gland. It's a protein that every anyone that's got prostate tissue will secrete it in the blood. Really transformed the diagnosis and prognosis of prostate cancer back in the early 90s when it came around. But because before then, men would be diagnosed, you know, really with they'd present with back pain. You do an X-ray, you see bony secondaries, you check the prostate gland. We didn't have a PSA. It felt cancerous, and men would present with late disease. So it's been one of these you know, really good things in medicine. So hopefully it's useful and look forward to seeing you soon.